Hello EFD squad and welcome to the Euro Roundup where you pick our winners and losers from the weekend just past joining me for the first time in what seems like forever. It's Patrick Van Straten. Hi. Are you emotional? Yes. Slash have hay fever. First review show with me for what, a month? I don't know, it feels like forever and also not long enough. Still too dry we for my liking. We do it. Far too dry. Get out. Anyway, um, what is our first section? Uh, we've got some Twitter Beef for oh, yeah. You. As always, beef. Chris and I supply the beef. Uh, and this time it comes from at Uzal496. And he says, who would you have in your team based on current form? Cristiano Ronaldo or Mohamed Salah? Twitter beef. I want a big bit of beef. Ooh. I want the editor to just wham that to your face right now. What? Just, uh, actually not a piece of beef. A beef, beef, Zach's a head. beef injection. Zach, the back of Zach's head more specifically. What? There's a task for you, James. Um, right. Yeah, I think... Despite being a huge fan of Mo Salah, I'm still going to go for Cristiano Ronaldo on good. this one, Patrick. Because did you know that if Mo Salah continued in this current vein until he was 40, he still wouldn't have scored as many goals as Cristiano Ronaldo has at 33? That, my yeah, friend, but that doesn't, is persistence. But that doesn't persistence? Really help, does it? Yeah, that works. Um, I mean, no, not when you're having a conversation about a single season, but still. Numbers, impressive numbers at that. Uh, he's got, he, he scored in 11 games in a row this season uh, of late. Uh, he's got 27 goals in his last 14 for club and country. And 41 goals in 38 games this season, considering that start is no mean feat. I think he had five league goals until about three weeks ago. Uh, he's got five league assists too. And he's averaging a goal every 91 minutes, which I believe is slightly behind Mo Salah. But yeah, still, 89 minutes for but Salah. But he's not mate. playing with bloody and informed Bobby Firmino and, uh, you know, a very pacey uh, Mane. Almost called him Sane. Always happens. Um, he's playing with Karim Benzema, who is still on five league goals. Um, but yes, in the UCL as well, uh, you know, the premier competition. He has 15 goals in 10 games with three assists and he's taking 7.2 shots per 90, which is still I mean, monstrous. Is no one can shut him down at 33. Oh, tell me I'm wrong. You are wrong. Right, like, I mean, it's, it's weird that you decided to bring up Firmino and Mane as like uh, things that kind of like make Ronaldo look better when Ronaldo is also playing in front of Tony Cross, Luka Modric, like Kovacic. Yeah, like for these, sure. These are the all quality players. The suppliers there, but have not you the potency up front. But have you looked at, yeah, but the suppliers are, what's mass, are what matter for scoring goals, right? Have you looked at the midfield at Liverpool? It's so bad. Milner. Like, Lana's out injured. Obviously, Coutinho left. Chan, injured. Wijnaldum, shit. Oxlade-Chamberlain, only just showing that he has any ability whatsoever. Like, Mo Salah has 30 league goals, uh, just netted his 30th against Bournemouth over the weekend. First African player to do yeah. so. Better than That's Drogba immense, isn't it? ever was, by a long way. Also, it's the assists, I think, where it gets insane. He's also got 11 assists. 11 assists. It's absolutely mental. His goals apparently earned Liverpool this season an extra 15 points. That means that if they didn't have his goals in the side and didn't have somebody else providing any goals or assists, they would be one point ahead of Arsenal. And we're sh We're barely ahead wow. of Burnley, mate. I think that might have clinched it for me. You, you've convinced me. You've charmed That's me. Absolutely outraged. I mean, look, his, his Champions League form can't hold a candle to Cristiano Ronaldo. He's only been involved in 10 goals in 10 games, whereas Cristiano Ronaldo has Perfect. been involved in 18. But Mo Salah, he's got the pace as well. He's just 25, or is he just about to turn 26? Anyway, he's seriously, seriously got a bright future ahead of him. I, and that pay, the, the, the things his pace does to the defence, it kind of reminds me of what used to happen with Cristiano Ronaldo, where defenders would just back off and off and off because they had no idea. They would, knew they'd get toasted if they went in. I also think that, yeah, the, one, of the, one of the things that people can sort of conjure in terms of criticism about him is that he seems to require a, a decent amount of chances uh, before he scores but he, he creates those chances by virtue of being so fast and at that speed it's harder to finish those chances yeah. so like his strength is also kind of his weakness which is a good place to and be you could, but you can make the but, same argument about Cristiano Ronaldo right like nobody thinks of Cristiano Ronaldo as a guy who needs loads of chances to score but when you see that he gets a goal per game but also takes seven shots per game then you see that, mm. that but that of necessity, six out of seven shots are not going in. Like, I mean, great players are good at getting yeah. chances, aren't they? And just how 
with those 7.2 shots, how dependent Real Madrid still are on his output, which yes. has been, I think, has been very clear this season, which is an alarming state of affairs, actually. It is indeed. Um, but what do you guys think? Is it Cristiano Ronaldo? Is it Salah? Who would you prefer in your team this season? The question stipulates. Paul. First winners then, and this comes from Jake Allais. It's actually Jake Allais, but you know, French, because uh, it's PSG. Yeah, they absolutely battered Monaco in this game. Last season's champions, Monaco, 7-1. They've won Ligue 1 for the fifth time in the last six years. And, just to make this even more impressive, they didn't have Neymar or Mbappe in this game, oh, playing God. Draxler and Pastore instead, with Pastore making only his 11th league start. Still, he's been involved in eight goals in those 11 games, including two assists in this match, so he might get an interesting move this summer. Another Argentinian, very impressive, Di Maria got his 10th and 11th league goals. One of them an absolutely glorious chip after being sent through by Edinson Cavani, who I think you're going to talk about. Sand wedge of a foot. Uh, I just wanted to take a little break, though, from PSG to talk about Ronnie Lopez, though, who's a 22-year-old Portuguese player who got Monaco's only goal. He's got 13 goals and five assists mm. now for the club this season. That's really impressive stuff for a youngster in a team which is obviously in kind of rough shape after losing so many important players last summer. It makes you wonder how Portugal are going to look in the World Cup because, of course, they've got Cristiano Ronaldo in incredible form. They've got Gonzalo Guedes, who's been impressing, obviously on loan from PSG at Valencia, and Ronnie Lopez. Really interesting upgrades on Nani and Quaresma. And Bruno Fernandes, who you're a big fan of. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes will hopefully be playing in that attacking midfield role. Um, he's been absolutely sensational and back in Portugal this season. Um, to be honest, though... When your team is banging goals like this, everyone looks good. PSG have got 103 goals after 33 league matches. They're the first Say side what? to reach 100 goals in the top five European leagues this season. Man City are second on 93. We'd expect them to make it as well. But they still have to score another 16 in their remaining games to beat RC Paris' record from 1959-1960. If they do that, they've got a claim to being the best French side ever. RC Paris, named after the notoriously moody inhabitants mm, of the true. capital. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, and it wouldn't be another PSG drubbing, would it, without Edinson Cavani getting in on the act with El Matador scoring his 25th league goal in just 27 starts. He has been the centrepiece of this PSG side, hasn't he? Which is no mean feat considering, like Pato said, the stars are Mbappe and Neymar. Uh, that header. It's outrageous. It's unbelievable. It's the leap. Emphatic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how does he get so high? What I like about Cavani is most of his goals make you go in there. Like he, yeah. he properly puts them away, doesn't he? I mean, he? a lot of his misses make, <laughs> yeah. make you do that as well. By the same token, but he absolutely wraps things away. There's, n there's no pussyfooting with him. And his all-round play in this match. I mean, like he does this little reverse pass for Dani Alves, who set up the first goal for Lo Celso. Yeah. He puts uh, Di Maria through for his Ball goal over the top by basically like chesting it, then hooking it over his shoulder. Unbelievable. Underrated. Stuff. Um, yeah, he's now equaled Zlatan Ibrahimovic's record as PSG's top goalscorer in Ligue 1 with 113 goals. And the South American Samba didn't stop there. Pat, do a little bit of Samba for us. No. Fair enough. Um, with 21-year-old Giovanni Lo Celso getting in on the act, scoring a brace, tripling his total for the season. He's now got three goals in Ligue 1. And it's sort of kind of the breakout star in that PSG setup. He's a kind of him and Kim Pembe. Mm, Kimpembe is quite a promising player, isn't he? Yeah. And the former Rosario central man dominated the midfield on the night, score, uh, sorry, starting in a three with Rabio and Draxler, seemingly doing it all from his numbers anyway. Five tackles, two goals, a 95% pass act, and one key pass to boot, which is pretty impressive. He's creating and scoring those opportunities given his role in that midfield is probably to, to shore things up. Sure. Because, you know, the other two quite attack-minded. Um, PSG now have 162 goals in 52 games in all competitions. They've been great value for money this season, haven't they? Meanwhile, uh, talking of value for money, Monaco ended up reimbursing their fans for the trip north. Not surprised. And it's been really flat season for them, hasn't it? Following that uh, sort of monumental victory last season. Um, but five and six, like Pato said, PSG stranglehold continues. What else is to say about it? Nothing. Next section.
First losers. It's Benfica. This comes from at Tryon underscore BC7. That's a real troll name, mate. Anyway, what happened to Benfica? Because there have been some seismic changes in the Liga mm. Nosh, haven't there? <laughs> Don't laugh. It's serious. It's what? a serious league. What? film is that from? Loser! Because I said Don't it like remember. that in Winners and Losers. It's definitely off something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Lo uh, anyway, if you know, let us know in the comments below. But yes, Benfica lost 1-0 to Porto thanks to a last-minute screamer from Captain, a Mexican more importantly, a Mexican, Hector Herrera. And I'm not sure how he got it out of his feet. He was literally shut down by around three or four defenders. So, yeah. Uh, this result means Porto have leapfrogged Benfica in top spot. Two points ahead of them now with four games to go. So, Ooh. in terms of the complexion of the season, this could have been a seminal result. Um, this has ended Benfica's 23 league game unbeaten streak. Uh, they last lost on the 16th of September against Boa Vista. Um, and you know what? Fairly even game, shot-wise. Yeah. Benfica managed nine to Porto's eight. Ooh. Both had two on target. Not a lot so, of shots. So it was a cagey affair. Yeah, it was, wasn't um, it? Jonas, who has been Benfica's talisman yet again this season with a ridiculous scoring record. Um, he's averaging 1.18 goals per 90. Uh, was sorely missed. And it's seen from the highlights, at least, that Benfica kind of controlled the first half and then maybe settled for a draw second half. And we all know that can be a dangerous game. Uh, they brought on Andreas Samaris in the 74th minute, actually, uh, which meant they were playing two CDMs uh, for the last 20 minutes, which actually let Porto press a little bit more. Sure. And, uh, you know, they caved in the end, Pato. Yeah, well, you can see that from the, uh, the numbers you're getting from the man of the match in this game, who was the right back, Ricardo Pereira, who, of course, was on loan at Nice last season. Managed seven tackles, which is the same as Benfica's entire back line but also competed five dribbles That's and crazy. had a shot. Plus, of course, got the clean sheet in the end. So, I mean, the fact that they invited this pressure, they kind of have got to expect that something like this is going to happen. Ike Casillas only faced two shots on target, saved both of them. He's now only conceding every 174 minutes in the league. That's unbelievable, because he's going to go every other game. Um, but anyway, Hector Herrera, one shot, straight in could possibly have given his side the title. And that's exactly what we want to know from you. Can Porto go on and win the Liga Nosh or will Benfica come back? Let us know what you think in the poll right up there. Our final winners are Atletico Madrid, more specifically El Nino. And this comes from at Atleti underscore boy, which means well, it does, someone it? suggested Atletico Madrid. And Zach couldn't be bothered to go back and find the handle. Yeah, that sounds about right, doesn't so. it? But they do deserve to be in here. And before we go on to Fernando Torres, I'm going to set the scene with Atleti's result. They won 3-0. They were playing 17th place Levante. So it's a game we'd expect them to win. Um, and actually, it was more even than you might think. 56% possession for Atleti. 13 shots to Levante's 11. 5 on target to Levante's 3. And the difference for me was Angel Correa. I was talking him up the other day. He netted the first goal for Atletico Madrid and was clearly the man of the match. Five shots scored once, completed six dribbles, made six tackles and interceptions, and got an assist. These are the kind of defensive numbers you will only see from an attacker under Diego Simeone. He's got nine goals this season in all competitions. Not a huge number, but he's only 22, so he is still uh, he's still got a lot of room to improve. It's his best scoring tally anyway. And uh, Griezmann also got one after half time. He's now level with Messi on 14 goals in 2018. Only Cristiano Ronaldo with 19 mm. has more. So they are starting to come into form just as we get to the crunch part of the season. They face Arsenal in the Europa League. They're going to batter us. Very few players after sort of Messi and Ronaldo that are as consistent as Antoine Griezmann since he moved to Atletico Madrid. Sure. And his last season at Sociedad. I think he mm. got like 16 league goals, didn't he? Yeah. Um, but yes, most of the talk was about Fernando Torres who finished off proceedings with his 100th La Liga goal for the club. Only the fifth player for Los Rojiblancos uh, to reach the milestone. Uh, so a big congratulations to him. Thoroughly deserves it. Um, he's done well to carve himself a career out after that knee injury. And it didn't look like it was going to happen this season. He's been used very sparingly. Um, and he's also confirmed, hasn't he, that he's going to depart the club at the end of the season. So yeah. it's quite a nice story. Everything has come full circle for Fernando Torres. 
Um, where do you think you'll go at the end of the season? Possibly in India, the ISL maybe, or a retirement or an MLS side. Yeah. One would imagine. Um, yes, he came on after the 58th minute, only having one shot, but scored it. Um, Atletico Madrid now second place, or still second place, should I say, in fact. Four points ahead of third place, Real Madrid, and they play Real Sociedad on Thursday. So hopefully they can, you know, continue to to sort of uh, secure that second place berth because they deserve it, yeah. I, I imagine, over the course of the season. Not I imagine, I'm telling you. Our second and final losers of the week are Eintracht Frankfurt. This comes from a guy whose name is just a collection of letters, really. L-M-R-L-U-F-C. Brilliant. <sighs> Nearly there, Pato. I don't know why yes. I bother. Bayer Leverkusen destroyed their top four rivals, Eintracht Frankfurt, 4-1 at home to leave them third in the table above Dortmund on goal difference and just four points behind Schalke in second place. Um, yeah, so basically I'm covering Bayer Leverkusen, if you haven't noticed. I know our losers are kind of Frankfurt and Kovac, but just to kick proceedings off. Um, yes, the opener came from Julian Brandt. That was his eight of the season. And the equaliser came from Mexican midfielder, another Mexican, uh, Marco Fabian. But a second half hat trick from Kevin Volland sealed the win, Pato. Uh -huh. And he's been in fine fettle, hasn't he, mate? In fact, he's the top scoring German in the division. How'd you like that for stats? Anyway, Eintracht are now seventh on uh, 46 points, five points behind fourth place in Dortmund, whereas Bayer are third ahead of BVB on goal difference now. And this continues Eintracht's recent dodgy form. Yeah. Uh, one win in five, three draws, one loss, despite Kovac getting the nod for the buying job. Um, Kevin Volland now has 14 goals and two assists in 28 league games this season. Um, he's second to Lewandowski, who's got 27. Jesus. So, bit of a gap there. Uh, Leverkusen have only lost three games since the 20th of September though, so finding a bit of consistency at the business end of the season. Recent record, played 12, won six, drawn four, lost two. Goals scored 15, goals conceded nine. Only Dortmund on 57 and Bayern on 81 have scored more than their 55 Bundesliga goals. These details are unnecessary, but you know, depth. They have five players who have been involved in more than 10 goals. Volland, Bailey, Brandt, Alario, who is he? And Kai Havertz, 11. Very impressive from uh, the young German who is pretty much making his debut season. Breakout campaign, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Pato, uh, Eintracht, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, Eintracht have obviously had a bit of a rough week. Um, this defeat came the day after it was announced that Niko Kovac would take over as Bayern boss in the summer. He's been in charge since March 2016. And in that time, He's had some amazing success in Frankfurt. Uh, achieved safety in 15-16, came 11th last year. This year they've been pushing for the top four, though they've fallen off the pace a little mm. bit recently. Um, and it would be an interesting kind of formation switch for Bayern Munich. We'd expect Kovac to use this 3-4-2-1 formation when he goes over. Um, it hasn't really gone down well with everyone at Frankfurt, though. Their director of football was livid, Freddie Bobic. He said that it was a disgrace that Bayern had announced this right in the middle of the season when the race for the top four is still it's going on. But I'm not sure that you can really blame the announcement for this performance. Uh, Eintracht only had seven shots with one shot on target. By comparison, Kevin Folland had six shots on his own and got five of those on target, which is absolutely outrageous. Kevin. Um, but up until this game... Frankfurt's success had been built on a really solid defence. They conceded 33 goals in 29 games. That was the second best in the league, which actually shows you that defence this season has been terrible in the Bundesliga. There's only one team in the division who have conceded under a goal a game, and that is Bayern Munich. By comparison, I believe there are six teams in the Premier League who have conceded under a goal per game, or a goal per game. Um, yeah, you mentioned Kai Havertz. I just want to talk about him again. Obviously, he's 18 years old. He's now got eight assists and three goals in the league. That's 0.4 assists per 90, 18 years old. He's mm. got a bright future ahead of him. No wonder he's been linked with Man United and Arsenal. But Niko Kovac on his way out of Frankfurt, and Frankfurt, by the looks of things, out of the top four race. 
Time for some shout outs now before we wrap this biatch up. Uh, and they are as follows. Adele Khalifa and official Mikael uh, wanted to shout out Naldo for scoring in the Revier derby. He now has seven goals and two assists in the Bundesliga as a 35-year-old centre-half. He used to be ruthless on a football manager. 20s left, right and centre. English Lionesses, she got back to us. Always keeps us updated, doesn't she, on uh, what's been happening. Fran Kirby-wise, who's clearly a personal hero. She has 22 in 28, so well done to Fran. And at Barno, 1047. God, some of these handles lack a bit of imagination, don't they? Um, asks, have Napoli lost the Scudetto following that nil-nil draw with AC Milan? Mm. Probably could have been a section by itself, but didn't really want to talk about a damp squib, did we? No. Um, I mean, at this point... Barno, let's just go with yes. What's happening on uh, Winners, and, Winners and Losers on Football Daily and Euro Football Daily? Yeah, well, obviously, Winners and Losers is on Football Daily. We've covered that. Stat Wars, the champions, of course, is up and running again. 90 plus one is happening. We've got a great top 10 at the weekend about the Champions League. We discussed Liverpool's title credentials for next season on Sunday Vibes. There's so much good content. So make sure you subscribe here. Subscribe to 90 plus one. Subscribe to FDFC. Subscribe to FD. And subscribe to Chris's new channel. Bye. Bye.